Day number 10 of the 12 days of MLB rankings is here, which means I'm ranking the best relief pitcher from every team in Major League Baseball. Relievers are so volatile, this thing changes like crazy. A lot of new names in today's video. Just a heads up for the rest of the ranking schedule. Tomorrow will be the top 30 pitchers in baseball. Christmas Day will be the top 50 players in Major League Baseball. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on those videos coming at you. And without further ado, let's get going into these relief pitcher rankings. Get today's video started at the number 30 spot, Brad Boxberger of the Chicago Cubs. Boxberger had a solid year last year in Milwaukee, where he had one of the best ERAs of his career at 2.95, but the whip was a little bit high and the FIP was a little bit higher as well at 3.57. Boxberger struck out 25% of the batters he faced, walking 10. There's just not a whole lot here with Brad Boxberger, and the Cubs bullpen is just kind of horrible, so he's the best option. Next up, at number 29, I've got Dylan Floro of the Miami Marlins. Floro's decent, like all these guys are solid relievers, but towards the bottom of this list, you're not really looking at these lights out, guys. Same thing with Floro. He'll give you a 3 ERA. He's done it every year pretty much since 2019. A whip at 1.74, a FIP at 3.13. Just doesn't have crazy good strikeout numbers. A 21.8% K rate with a 6.8% walk rate. Don Floro's just a solid reliever. One of the most peculiar relievers in today's video, Detroit Tigers left-handed closer Gregory Soto. Soto's like good, but also bad. Like he had 30 saves on the year, a 3.28 ERA and 60 innings, but his whip was really high at 1.376. His K rate wasn't particularly high. It was like the worst of his career at 22.8 and his walk walk rate was 13%. So while he does get saves and the ERA was low, it could be a little bit of a product of the situation because the stats overall just were not very good in terms of stuff. Coming in at number 27, Los Angeles Angels best reliever, Jimmy Hergit. Let's throw some respect on Jimmy Hergit's name. What he did in 2022 was a really good season. 49 appearances, 69 innings. Nice. 2.48 ERA with a whip under one at 0.913. His FIP was 2.82, so he had a good season overall. His K rate was right around 24% walking under 6% of the batters he faced. He's got that herky, jerky, funky type stuff. He doesn't blow the stuff by you, but he's a crafty right-handed submarine type reliever. He makes it tough on hitters with his herky, jerky stuff. Just missing on the top 25, coming in at number 26, Brock Burke of the Texas Rangers. Brock Burke had a phenomenal year in 2022 with the Rangers and a little bit of a longer relief role. 52 games, 82 and a third innings pitch, a 1.97 ERA, a whip at 1.05. His FIP was a little bit higher at 3.29, but he was able to strike out 27% of the batters he faced while only walking 7.3%. Give him a pretty good K to walk ratio. Keep an eye out for him in 2023. Getting the top 25 started at number 25, new Oakland A's closer, Trevor May. While Trevor May battled injuries for most of the 2022 season, you gotta look at what he's been able to do over the last 80 or so innings that he's pitched, and you're looking at a guy with a K rate right around 30%, does walk a few more than you'd like, a walk rate hovering around 8.59%, but the fastball, the slider, they're very good, and I actually think him going to Oakland's going to be a big help because he is a fly ball pitcher, and we know that Oakland plays really big. For the 24th best reliever in today's video, Scott Barlow of the Kansas City Royals. Barlow has put up back-to-back -back years of just being a solid reliever. Now, the stuff did decline a little bit in 2022. We saw the K rate drop 3%, but also also, the walk rate went down, so that was a good improvement. 74 and a third innings for the second year in a row, 24 saves, 2.18 ERA with a whip under one at 0.996 and a FIP at 3.62. Barlow's a really good reliever. Also, great nickname, Scoots Magoots. Is that real? Next up at number 23, Joe Mantiply of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Mantiply is the soft contact king. Crafty left-handed reliever out of the bullpen for the Diamondbacks. Made his first ever all-star team last year at the age of 31. He had a phenomenal year. 69 appearances, nice, with 60 innings pitched, 2.8 5 ERA with a whip under 1 at 0 .1083 and a FIP at 2.83. Like I said, he limits hard contact, doesn't walk anybody. He had a walk rate last year of 2.5% with a K rate at 25. That's an awesome year from Joe Mantiply and the Diamondbacks. Coming in at number 22, Alexis Diaz of the Cincinnati Reds. Brother of Edwin, Alexis, really good. Finished fifth in the Rookie of the Year voting. 63 and two-thirds innings pitched. 1.84 ERA with a whip under 1 at 0.958. FIP was a little bit higher though at 3.32, so maybe a little bit lucky. But he struck out 32.6% of the batters he's faced, which is really good. That's an elite level kind of stuff, but his walk rate was really high. 13%. So that's why Alexis Diaz is a little bit lower, but the stuff looked really good and Edwin himself has said that Alexis has a better slider than he has. Just missing on the top 20, coming in at number 21, I've got Sir Anthony Dominguez of the Philadelphia Phillies. Sir Anthony looked really good last year in 2022. 51 innings, 54 appearances after missing basically two full seasons due to injury, a three flat ERA with a FIP at 3.09, a whip at 1.137, striking out almost 30% of the batters he faced, also walking around 10.5% of them, all really 
really good signs moving forward for Sir Anthony Dominguez. He has some absolutely electric stuff on the mound for the Phillies. Great fastball, good slider. He should be their lockdown reliever in the 2023 season for sure. Getting the top 20 started at number 20, Hunter Harvey of the Washington Nationals. Hunter Harvey last year in a relief role was pumping gas. Made 38 appearances with the Nationals, 39 innings, a 2.52 ERA with a whip at 1.14 and a FIP at 2.07. He was pumping 100 consistently, had a good split finger pitch that was working as well, and he struck out 28.7% of the batters he faced while walking only 7.6% while also giving up only one home run on the year. A lot of good from Hunter Harvey. Had some electric stuff with that fastball, like I said. Good enough to get him in my top 20. Speaking of electric stuff, the 19th best reliever in today's video, Camilo Doval of the San Francisco Giants. This dude throws like 100. His sinker has unbelievable amounts of break, and he pitched really well. He's a ground ball king. 67 and two-thirds innings last year. He had 27 saves, a 2.53 ERA with a whip at 1.241, and a FIP at 2.98. I mentioned him being a ground ball king. 57% of the balls in play were ground balls, and he had a K rate of 28% still, but Camilo Doval could low-key be like a top 10 reliever, no doubt, next season. Next up at number 18, Colorado Rockies reliever Daniel Bard. Bard was just nasty last year. The slider was working, he was pumping heat with the fastball, and he had another great year at age 37. Gotta love the Daniel Bard story. He got MVP votes! Granted, he had a really good year, a 1.79 ERA in 60 innings pitched with 34 saves, a whip under one at .994, a FIP at 2.86, and Bard in Colorado struck out 28% of the batters he faced while walking 10%. Daniel Bard is a really solid reliever. Dropping down quite a bit in today's video at number 17, I've got Kenley Jansen now of the Boston Red Sox. Let's just face it, Kenley Jansen is not the same pitcher that he once was. Still very good, but there are some signs of concern with Kenley. But that cutter was really good, and he still did strike out 32.7% of the batters he faced while walking only 8.5%. So we're in the range now of all these relievers are really nasty. It's just I like the guys on the list ahead of him a little better. Next up at number 16, Pete Fairbanks of the Tampa Bay Rays. You guys might remember Pete Fairbanks for having the crazy eyes during the postseason in the COVID year. While he was limited in 2022 to only 24 innings, the numbers were absolutely insane. A 1.13 ERA with a whip at .667 and a FIP at .86. He struck out 43% of the batters he faced, walking only 3.5%. Yeah, these numbers aren't really realistic for him to keep up, but his stuff is disgusting. And with a fully healthy season, Peter Fairbanks could definitely find himself in the top 10 by the end of the year. Getting the top 15 started at number 15, Clay Holmes of the New York Yankees. Clay Holmes really came on strong to start the season. Didn't look so great down the stretch, but still his ability to get ground balls at an elite rate that he does makes him one of the better relievers in the game. A 77% ground ball rate last year. While also striking out 25% in 63 innings, he had a 2.54 ERA with a whip at 1.021 and a FIP at 2.84. When you play in a band box like Yankee Stadium, getting ground balls is huge. Coming in at the number 14 spot, Jordan Romano of the Toronto Blue Jays. Gotta love the combination of fastball slider that you see from Romano. It's absolutely disgusting. He's got electric stuff. While the K rate did go down last year to 28.3%, where it was really hovering around 33-34 before, the stuff was still good enough that Jordan Romano was extremely effective. A 2.11 ERA in 64 innings with 36 saves, a whip at 1.016, and a FIP at 2.82. All stuff you love to hear from your close. Next up at number 13 for the Los Angeles Dodgers, Evan Phillips. Now, you might be like, Evan Phillips? This guy? Why? Well, listen to the numbers that he put up last year with the Dodgers. This dude's legit one of the best relievers in the entire game. 6 through 3 innings, 1.14 ERA with a whip at .762, that's nasty, a FIP at 1.94, an ERA plus at 367. He struck out 33% of the batters he faced while only walking 6.4%. The Dodgers have been building a pitching lab forever now, and you're seeing it come to fruition with Evan Phillips, who's using that new slider that we call a sweeper to absolute perfection. Just a little bit outside the top 10, at number 12, heading to Pittsburgh to talk about David Bednar. We gotta throw some respect on David Bednar's name. Quietly been one of the best relievers in baseball the last two years with the Pirates. In 112 innings the last two years, Dave Bednar has a 2.4 ERA with a whip at 1.042 and a FIP at 2.57, while also striking out 32.7% of the batters he faced and walking under 8%. Bednar's got that hard fastball with a really, really nasty split finger and a curveball that works as well. Puts him in that upper echelon tier, just like Dave Bednar belongs. Just missing out on the top 10, coming in at number 11, Felix Batista of the Baltimore Orioles. Batista is gross. Now, he did kind of falter a little bit the last three weeks of the season, but even still, with that hiccup, the numbers were crazy in his rookie year. 65 appearances, 65 and two-thirds innings pitched. He had 15 saves with a 2.19 ERA, a whip under one at .929, and a FIP at 2.91. He struck out 34.8% of the batters he faced, walking only 9%. He throws gas, and he has got an unreal splitter. It's devastatingly good. Getting the top 10 started at number 10, 
Devin Williams of the Milwaukee Brewers. Devin Williams last year, a bit of an interesting season, obviously ended up taking over that closer role when they traded Josh Hader away. And while it wasn't perfect, he was still very good. Williams finished the year with 60 and two thirds innings pitched, a 1.93 ERA with a whip at 1.005 and a FIP at 2.01. While Williams does have a walk problem, he does tend to walk guys a little bit more than you'd like. He does strike out about 40% of the batters he faces and he gives up no hits. He's got that crazy changeup screwball. Devin Williams is nasty. For the ninth best reliever in today's video, St. Louis Cardinals closer Ryan Helsley. Helsley just went off last year, pumping the radar gun, touching 100. He was one of the best closers in the game. 64 and two-thirds innings, he had a 1.25 ERA with a whip under one at .742, which is just silly good, a FIP at 2.34, ERA plus at 306, made the all-star team, finished 12th in the Cy Young voting. It's because he struck out almost 40% of the batters he faced while walking only 8.4%. That's insanely good for a reliever. That's insanely good for anybody. Ryan Helsley is sick. Next up at the number eight spot, I've got Rizel Iglesias of the Atlanta Braves. Iglesias just keeps doing it year after year after year. One of the most consistent relievers in baseball. Third straight season with an ERA under threes. Third straight season with a whip under one. Third straight season with a FIP under three. There's just nothing not to like about Rizel Iglesias. He's really good, especially once he got out of the Angels. He got even better with the Braves, where he had a .34 ERA in 26 innings. Iglesias is so good. I can't believe the Braves got him for nothing. Bit of an aggressive rating here. At number seven, Yohan Duran of the Minnesota. Minnesota Twins. Duran has some of the most electric stuff in all of baseball. Pumping 100 plus with multiple pitches. He has an unreal pitch that we're calling the splinker, which is like a splitter sinker because it has such velo and such movement. And the most interesting fact about Yohan Duran, if you take his K rate plus his ground ball rate, it ends up being like how he gets 90% of his outs. His K rate was 33.5% last year with a walk rate of six. I actually hyped this guy up a few years ago as a prospect that I think was an absolute stud. And boy, oh boy, did he show it in 2022. Just missing on the top five, coming in at number six, Ryan Presley of the Houston Astros. Presley is quiet, very, very good. It's just because he doesn't throw hard, doesn't have the nastiest stuff, but year after year, Presley puts up good seasons. Second year in a row with an ERA under three, second year in a row with a whip under one. He had a whip at 0.89 this year, a FIP at 2.31, bumped up the K rate to 35.7% while walking only 7.1% of the batters he faced. Limits hard contact, doesn't give up home runs, everything you'd want out of an elite closer, right? Ryan Presley's got it for you. Getting the top five started at number five, Andres Munoz of the Seattle Mariners. Oh baby, Andres Munoz, that arm is disgusting. The fastball, again, touching upper 90s, low 100s, and he's got a wicked, wicked slider. Last year in 65 innings, 2.49 ERA with a whip under one at .892, with a FIP at 2.04. Munoz struck out 38.7% of the batters he faced, walking only 6.1% to give him a K-to-walk ratio of about 32%, which is just among the best in Major League Baseball. He's going into his 24-year-old season. This guy is going to be one of the best relievers in baseball, no doubt. The stuff is unbelievably good. This is going to be your closer for a long, long time in Seattle. Despite a down year, coming in at number four, I'm still going to put Josh Hader. This year was a bit of a nightmare. Hader finished with a 5.22 ERA and a whip at 1.28, by far the worst he's ever had. But his FIP was still relatively low at 3.45, and he was doing the Josh Hader thing where he was still striking out a ton of batters, but it was down to 28.2%. He had some weird stuff going on with San Diego where they were trying to change his arm slot. He had a couple horrendously bad outings that ended up skewing a lot of his numbers, but even still, I can't forget when he was striking out 40% of the batters he faced and was literally unhittable. So while it was a down year, Josh Hader is still a top five reliever in my eyes, but if he continues to pitch as poorly as he did last year, definitely got to reconsider that. I'm just not done with Hader just yet. For the third best reliever in Major League Baseball, head to the south side of Chicago to talk about Liam Hendricks, the man from down under. Hendricks is a monster. He's a beast. I love the way he pitches on the mound. Last year in 57 and two-thirds innings, 2.81 ERA with a whip at 1.04 and a FIP at 2.68. Hendricks continues to get swings and misses, striking out 36.2% of the batters he faced, walking 6.8%, a little bit higher than we've seen in the past, but Hendricks remains one of the best relievers in baseball for sure. Is he the best Australian player ever? Just missing out on the number one spot, coming in at number two. Two, Emmanuel Classe of the Cleveland Guardians. Classe is not going to put up the crazy K numbers like you hear from a lot of the guys at the top of this list. His K rate was 28.4%, which was still really good, by the way, just not like 40% like some of the other guys. But his walk rate was minuscule, 3.7%. That's nasty. He doesn't give up any hits because that cutter is one of the nastiest pitches in baseball. And last year in 72 and two-thirds innings, a 1.36 ERA, an ERA under 1.4, by the way, for the second straight year. He had a major league best 42 saves on the season, a whip 
whip under one at 0.729. Class A is absolutely disgusting, on pace to be one of the best closers we've ever seen. But of course, coming in at number one as the best reliever in Major League Baseball from my New York Mets, it's Edwin Diaz. Play those trumpets, baby. Edwin Diaz, ever since he got those trumpets, is a new man. So in 62 innings last year, 32 saves, 1.31 ERA, nice, with a whip at 0.839, disgusting, and a FIP at 0.90. You want to know why it's so low? Because Edwin Diaz struck out 50.2% of the batters he faced. If you came to the plate, there was a better chance that you struck out than any other outcome. 7.7 .7 walk percent too, like, this is crazy. The fastball, electric, 100 miles an hour. The slider, unhittable. Edwin Diaz was unreal last year. He's just simply the best closer in baseball, the best reliever. Super excited to get five more years of trumpets out in Queens. Let me know what you guys are thinking down in the comments section below. Do you agree or disagree with my reliever rankings? Drop a like on the video if you did enjoy. It really does help support the channel as well as subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the content coming at you, including the next two days, which are absolute bangers. Follow me on all my social media at GiraffeNickMark. Links are in the description. Thank you so much for watching, guys. You know the drill from here on out. This is yesterday's video ranking the best DH from every team in Major League Baseball, and this will be a playlist to the 12 days of MLB rankings. In case you missed any of those, click through them. Give them a watch. They're good videos. I promise I made them. They're good. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow for the top 30 pitchers in Major League Baseball. Bye.